Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Gamer Tidacom video, we're going to be discussing and analysing AMD Matisse news, because an awful lot of leaks have emerged over the past several hours, and one of those is a benchmark of the AMD's next generation processors. And to say that this benchmark is impressive is a huge understatement. Go ahead and look currently at the price of AMD's 2700X. Despite it receiving numerous price cuts over the past several months, it is still retailing at around the 300 US dollars depending on the retailer. Well, what if I told you that AMD's next generation processors in this leaked benchmark with the lowest end SKU that's going to cost around ooh, 99 US dollars, actually puts up a good fight if not beats the Ryzen 7 2700X. <laughs> yeah, so we'll be going into that in just a moment. Plus as well, a rather interesting nuance with the cache that had been hinted at with a leaked slide that I was sent, but obviously whether that slide was genuine or not was difficult to say, but this leaked benchmark does seem to lend some credence to the fact that yes, AMD have changed something regarding the cache structure that had not been yet known. And then we're going to move over to some other leaks as well, including one from Puget Systems, who accidentally confirmed something that they probably shouldn't have, and by probably shouldn't have, they definitely shouldn't have. Uh, Puget Systems, by the way, are a well-known uh, manufacturer of high-end computers in uh, Seattle. Actually, I visited the location, funnily enough, a couple of, around six months ago, maybe. Uh, so you can go ahead and check that out on the channel. It's really interesting. They build high-end systems for companies who, for example, might want to have 20 or 30 systems for like 3D rendering, or they've even created systems for like NASA, believe it or not. So it's, or it's a really cool company, and they actually accidentally confirmed stuff that they probably shouldn't have, plus a couple of other leaks. But let's start things out with... Geekbench. Now, Geekbench is a very interesting application because it tests a system with numerous um, t benchmarks, but then it gives you a combined score. Uh, Geekbench is also very reliant on memory bandwidth. So let's have a look at the leaked benchmark. This is actually courtesy of Tom Apisak via Twitter, so shout out to him. So this benchmark uh, took place on the 23rd of May, obviously this year. And the single core score is 5,061, with a multi core score of 25,481 points. You could see that it was running 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory and was using AMD's uh, test motherboard system, that is QOGIRMTS. The memory is being reported at 1331, but obviously you've got DDR to take into consideration there. The base frequency is being reported, uh, assuming this is reading it correctly, of course, at 3.2 gigahertz, but turbos up to 4 gigahertz and is reading as Matisse. Six cores, 12 processor threads. Now here's what's interesting. Under the level 1 cache and also level 2 cache, so obviously level 2 cache remains consistent, 512 kilobytes of level 2 cache, so per core 512 KB. Under the instruction and data cache, though, they are both listed as 32 kilobytes, which is a change from the original Ryzen. I'll go into why in just a moment. Uh, and then under the performance metrics, we can see that this CPU just absolutely decimates the results. And bear in mind that this CPU is being rumored to be launched at just 99 US dollars. Um, compare that to another processor, uh, let's say a 2700X. There are numerous of these that are floating around on uh, Geekbench. At best, a 2700X, which is heavily overclocked, I've managed to pull up one result here uh, with very fast memory as well. It's heavily overclocked memory, so much faster memory, which obviously gives this a bit of an advantage. It scores 5100 points, a multi-core score of 3100 and sorry, 31,500 points, and the instruction cache here is 64 kilobytes. Um, but what's really interesting to me anyway is that an average score of uh, a 2700X is considerably lower than this. How much lower? Well, the average score of a 2700X is probably going to be more in the region of around 25,000 points for multi-core. So in other words, the 3300 and the 2700X 
are essentially neck and neck. If you take an average 2700X result and this 3300 result, you're going to get roughly the same performance. But the single core score is also very similar. You're going to get around the high 4000 mark, so let's say 4800 to maybe 5000 points for the 2700X on average with a single core score, whereas the 3300, assuming this is a 3300 for we know it could be called chicken, that scores uh, 5,061, which is absolutely monstrous. So getting back to the cash situation, as I mentioned, there is a distinct difference here between the amount of level one instruction cash. Now, it's possible a couple of things are going on. One, it's possible that it is being read incorrectly. You can't discount that right now. Another possibility is AMD have changed the way that the processor functions. They basically wanted to claw back some of the space on the processor itself. They figured that with the new branch prediction, the translation look aside buffer, and other changes on the silicon, although obviously some of this stuff is theoretical because AMD have not confirmed a lot of it, they basically just figured it was better to go with half the level one instruction cache because it wasn't really necessary from their internal testing, and that's the changes here. Uh, also, the level 3 cache is being read as 8 times uh, 2 as well. So Puget Systems basically confirmed that it already has a Ryzen 5 36 model in-house, and then it has actually redacted the statement because of, quote, possible NDA information. You can see the screenshots here. They have actually been grabbed by Tom'sHardware.com, so thanks very much to them. Also, rather interestingly, in the original statement, they said that they are hopeful that Ryzen 9 chips show up at some point, or at least a Ryzen 7. So this does indicate that Ryzen 9 is a real thing, and they hope that the actual CPU shows up in their office. So then, a few final thoughts before I close out the video. To me, it looks like we're going to be seeing around 10 to 15% IPC gains, most likely depending on the application itself. And of course, Zen Plus has a slight IPC gain over the original Zen architecture anyway. But around, let's say, 10% IPC from Zen to Zen 2 would not surprise me on average. And that's really good. And that's pretty damn impressive to me. Also, given that Geekbench is very memory bandwidth sensitive, these engineering sample results, and I'm assuming they are engineering sample, being conducted at just 2666 megahertz for the memory clunk, certainly are holding the CPU back a bit. I'll be interested to see whether these are final frequencies for this processor, and even if they are final frequencies, what's left in the tank? Because that's always the question, like, if it is 4 gigahertz, can we get like 4.2 or 4.4 gigahertz if we overclock it? Uh, once again, I've been told that the 12 core parts can run up to 5 gigahertz for single core speeds, but with multi core speed, it's around the 4.5 ish gigahertz frequency for the sample that's been floating around. Obviously, this is not necessarily the final clock speed for all CPUs in AMD's uh, lineup. We know now that AMD have CPUs from 4 cores all the way up to 16 cores that they can leverage in their arsenal to release over the next several months. And honestly, I think a lot of gamers are gonna be just really happy to pick up a board such as, let's say, a B450 or a B550, depending on the release schedule for that, you know, a reasonably priced one that doesn't necessarily have all the bells and whistles, but you don't need it, to be honest with you. Like, okay, it doesn't have RGB. Are you gonna be really that upset? And the average person, probably no. Does it really need like 500 PCIe slots with, you know, 22 uh, M.2 slots? Probably not. Most people are going to be happy with just, you know, a reasonable M.2 drive, a couple of SATA connections so you could hook up maybe a mechanical drive and maybe uh, a SATA-based SSD. You know, you've got one slot for your uh, PCIe graphics card and most people are going to be good with that. So I think that some really nice budget builds are going to be possible if these results are accurate because six processor cores, 12 threads, it's essentially like gaming on an i7-8700K. And I obviously will need to do some test testing on this. You're going to need to do some testing on this. And as a community, we're going to need to do testing on this. But I wouldn't be surprised if you overclock uh, one of these CPUs. It's basically going to be like gaming on an i7-8700K. 
And that to me is really impressive. Anyway guys, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I would like to take a moment to thank everyone who is a recent subscriber or has been a long time viewer to the channel. It means an awful lot. And also double shout out to the people who have emailed me or messaged me on social media concerning these leaks because several of you did. So thanks very much for you doing just that. And I wish you a great day. If you could share the video, that would be amazing uh, because that helps out the channel big time as well as subscribe if you've not already. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.